Wait up, wait up. I am actually quite excited to make this video and I'm calling it episode one because I definitely want to do more of these videos. And the amount of games that I not only played but basically beat and completed is insane for this year. I've never done this. I've made a video about it. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not done yet in the mall. I'll probably be keeping, uh, you know, playing video games and beating them. So I thought, why not rate the games that I have played and beaten? I don't really do reviews that much anymore. So why not rate the games that I have completed in one little video? And at the end of the video, I do have one cheat game. Um, this is in no particular order. So I basically start with two digital only games or well, digital games. These are two Japanese exclusives that have a English translation patch and I could play them on the Super Nintendo and on the PS2 that had like a MacBook. I call it my MacBook PS2. The first up is Ease 5 and I was playing Tales of Destiny and I was kind of getting a little bit burned out and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then I started playing Ease 5 and I got hooked to it. I love the game. It is a little bit easy, it's a little bit on the short side, but it is a fantastic RPG. I give it a solid 7.5, of course, out of 10. Next up is, as I mentioned, Tales of Destiny, the director's cut on the PS2. And oh boy, I love this game. The music is fantastic, the art design is great, the storyline is all right. However, in the middle of the game, the second part of the game, you basically go through a dungeon with a puzzle, dungeon with a puzzle, dungeon with a puzzle, dungeon with another puzzle, dungeon with a puzzle, and so forth and so forth. And it really burnt me out, even though in one of these dungeons, the music was so good, I grinded my ass off because I loved the soundtrack in one of those dungeons. And I have to admit, I did use the guide to get through these dungeons a little bit quicker because I hate puzzles. And I mean, there were like seven or eight dungeons in a row and then the end of the game. It's, it's kind of a little bit too much. Um, it felt like filler, but I'll give the game a solid eight out of 10 because I did really enjoy the game. Um, then we go back to sort of the physical games. I replayed Final Fantasy VIII in the remastered version on PS4 for the first time since my childhood. And sadly, the game wasn't as good as I remembered. There were a lot of storyline plot holes, a lot of, I don't know, the story just didn't really felt that epic as I remembered in my mind. And the gameplay is still solid and the music is god tier. I'm still giving this an 8 out of 10, but this was a 10 out of 10 game. Uh, basically in my childhood. So it has dropped pretty low in my opinion. Next up is a game I actually played and completed two weeks ago, that is Devil May Cry 4. I never played this game because you don't really play as Dante, you play as Nero and I didn't like him when I was younger and I still don't like him. I think that this is the weakest Devil May Cry game. Yes, even weaker than Devil May Cry 2 because, hear me out, you're gonna, you're gonna be shocked. I actually like Devil May Cry 2. No, it is not as good as the first one, or the third one, or even the fifth one, but I do like it. I do like it more than Devil May Cry 4. Um, I did play it on the PlayStation 4. It has a lot of extra stuff, etc., etc. It was not a bad game, um, but I'm giving it a seven half out of five. Next up is Star Ocean, The Last Hope. I also played this on the PS4. Incredible game. I love the music, the art design, the world building, the storyline was interesting enough to keep playing. Once I finally got the hang of it, the sort of upgrading your gear, or upgrading your weapons and armor system was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I still could go back and play the extra dungeon. Um, but I'm giving this a solid 8.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed Star Ocean, The Last Hope. And I forgot her name, but you know which girl I'm talking about with the big boobs. She's freaking amazing. I like her design. I don't give a shit. I'm a pervert. 
Um, next up is, oh boy, this is sort of the beginning of this year. Tales of Symphonia, I replayed it literally 10 years after the game got launched. And then I played it at least. It was really weird because on Facebook, I had a message like, hey, I was playing this game 10 years ago. I'm like, holy shit, I am playing it again 10 years later. That was incredible. This is a god tier game. If you have anyone who wanted to try out RPGs, who want to see what is an RPG about, let them play Tales of Symphonia. To me, it still holds up. It is even better than I remembered. I'm giving this a solid 9.5 out of 10. Next up is, oh boy, man, Grandia Tree. I finally could play this. This is a game that I was so hyped to play once I got my PS2 MacBook. This is the first game I was playing. I was so hyped for it, even though I kind of have heard here and there that the game is a little bit disappointing. The battle system is perhaps one of the best turn-based battle systems of all time. The battle system kept me going. The battle system kept me grinding. The battle system kept me trying to make the game a little bit longer, trying to get all the items, trying to get all the weapons. Because I think if I remember correctly, and I do, uh, certain, certain enemies dropped certain weapons and they were very powerful in certain items and stuff to upgrade your strength and upgrade your health. The storyline begins really good. And at a certain point in time where basically the main character says, goodbye, mom, the storyline goes, just crashed and burned. I didn't really care about it. Graphically, the game looks incredible for the PS2. Um, the music is all right. I mean, I was expecting way better music, way better storyline, way better uh, world building. But again, the character designs are great. And again, one of the female characters, big boobs. I like her. I don't give a shit. Uh, I'm giving this a 7 out of 10, though. And, you know, this was one of the most hyped games I had. I really wanted to play this. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I did like the battle system. This is probably what I remember the most, the battle system. Next up is Disgaea 2. It's been a very long time since I played a Disgaea game. I was so burnt out on them after playing Disgaea 3, playing Disgaea 4, and playing Disgaea 5. And I still need to beat this guy of five. And finally, after all these years, I started playing this guy at two. A lot of gamers say that this is the best one storyline-wise and character-wise. And okay, I do like number one better. Laharl is almost unbeatable. Laharl and Etna, they're so freaking cool. But uh, this one is fantastic. It's, it's a really good game. Not too long, not too short. I'm giving this eight out of 10. I really enjoyed this game. Next up is a game that I got pretty cheap, and me and my girlfriend actually played this. It is Metal Slug 5. Now, I do have to say, I like the game, but it feels, I'm just saying, it feels like every Metal Slug game is the same. Because I have almost all the Metal Slug games, at least on PS2, and every time I'm playing them, I'm like, I, I know this, it, this looks very familiar. It may just be because the art design is always the same. It is incredible. And that the, the, the sort of the way you play the game is always the same. And one of my sort of dreams is one day have a real arcade cabinet with Metal Slug on it. That would be so freaking cool. I played that when I was very young at a game uh, store who had an arcade cabinet with Metal Slug. That was really cool. I'm giving this game a 7.5 out of uh, 10, of course. But I would rate a 7 if I would have played it by myself. But it's a good game. Man, Tekken 4. Tekken 4 is like the black sheep of the Tekken games, right? I don't know why. Um, graphically, this game looks incredible. Especially if you consider the time. I love the music. I love the gameplay. I liked unlocking all the characters. That's basically what I did. I unlocked all the characters. Done everybody's um, storyline. But I really enjoyed Tekken 4. I don't know why people dislike this. Um, myself, I really enjoyed it. I'm giving this a 8 out of 10. Oh boy, this one rocks. This one is good. This one slapped my face a little bit. Wild Arms 3. Now, I made 
probably a few videos about this. Go check them out. But basically, I am not into Westerns. I don't like Western movies. I don't like Western settings. Uh, I have seen Western movies, etc. Uh, Wild Wild Best was actually pretty good with Will Smith, even though a lot of people hate it. But I liked it because it was fantasy over the top. So I never really got into any of the Wild Arm games. And a few months back, I was thinking, what should I play? And, like, and some were saying, like, oh, go play Wild Arm Street. Don't sell it. I was, I was selling my game collection, a large chunk of my game collection. And, and some of you said, oh, no, don't, you know, give it another shot. Give it another chance. And I did. And, oh, boy, this game is so freaking good. I love playing this game so much. And especially the early village. I already forgot the name. Um, the soundtrack it, is incredible. I still listen to it to this very date. Um, gameplay is fantastic, especially the whole riding on your horse and then basically like a western shooting and stuff. It was fantastic. The graphics are great. The music is great. The battle system is great. The storyline I liked. Almost no... I don't have anything to really say bad about this. I'm giving this an eight and a half out of 10 though. Um, and I say that in a bad way. That's a, that's a good way. Eight and a half is a really good. It's really good. I don't really usually hand out nines and tens to any game. Um, Cause to me, nine really means it is just beyond great. And 10 is, it's not a perfect game, but it is almost there, almost there. There is, there is a 10 out of 10 game. And if you have been subscribed to me, you have seen my videos, Leave in the comments below before you know it, before I'm going to tell you which game do you think is going to get a 10 out of 10. Next up is Champions of Norad Return to Arms. I finally was able to play this game. I love Champions of Norad. I love Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, especially that one. And part two, I kind of still need to replay. I only played it once. I did play this game uh, years back, but never really got far. And finally, I played and beaten the game. And it's sort of, how do I say it? Because I'm going to butcher the, 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 the word that I want to say. Revitalize. Oh, no, I actually spelled it right. Revitalize my interest in playing these type of games, these Diablo-style games. Champions of Nora Return to Arms is a fantastic Diablo clone, even though I, don't, I hate saying clone. A Diablo-style game, you really have to play it. It's not as good as the first one, though. I did like the first one better. I do like Baldur's Gate Dark Lines better, but I'm still giving this a 7.5 out of 10 because I really enjoyed the battle system. And I have to say that the characters, the graphics were amazing. Maybe one of the best graphical games in terms of when you, have, when you see your, your sort of inventory screen, you see a little character. That one is so detailed. It, it's incredible. I, I really, really enjoyed that game. And... Oh boy, these last three, three games hit very hard for me personally. And this one hit very hard. Because this is the first time I've ever played GTA San Andreas. I did play the different edition on PS4. I know a lot of people say that the sort of uh, feeling of being in sort of a GTA game or being in San Andreas is kind of lost because you have like fog in this game in a different edition when you're on top of the mountain you can basically see the entire world and to be really honest the world is gigantic especially for a PS2 game but somehow I don't know why this game hit so hard I loved this game so much and I'll be really honest, and hopefully I'm not, I'm, I won't um, sound like a racist, but when, I, when this game came out, I was like, no, 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 I don't like gangster stuff, and I don't like, uh, well, I do like rap music. That's not really what I was thinking, but I'm not super into rap music, right? But rap music like this? Hell yes, hell yes. I actually listen to rap music a little bit more because of this game. The, the storyline is fantastic. I love CJ. All the side characters are freaking cool, even though you kind of knew. Let's be honest. You kind of know from the start. There is something wrong with Smoke. You're thinking like, hey, why are you hanging out with cops so much? Why are you a buster? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It sounds probably really stupid saying from 
from me, but uh, I really loved GTA San Andreas. I tried to spread out the gameplay as much as I could, tried to do as much as I could, and, and still I know for a fact that there is so much more to explore in this game than I have done. Everything clicked with this game. Everything absolutely clicked with this game. I'm giving this a solid nine and a half out of 10. This is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic game. Talking about great games, I finally was able to replay or want to replay Devil May Cry 3, the special edition on PS3 though. I got the, uh, you know, the HD collection and stuff. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, after playing Final Fantasy VIII, is this game as good as I remember? And yes, it is. Devil May Cry 3 is still a fantastic hack and slash game. Action, hack and slash, horror, gothic, hack and slash, action, adventure. It doesn't really matter how you want to call it. It is a great game. I love the cockiness of Dante. I always did. And his design is incredible, much younger. Um, Lady is a great character, in my opinion. I liked her a lot when I was younger, and I still like her a lot now that I'm an old boomer. Because people actually call me a gaming boomer because I don't like modern games. No, I don't like the new Dragon Age. Of course fucking not. Um, stupid fucking stuff forced into the game. It doesn't matter, though. Um, I'm giving Devil May Cry 3 a... 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. Now, of course, the last game, that means this has to be the 10 out of 10 game, and that is Metal Gear Solid 3. A friend of mine has been bugging me for a few years. Claude, go play Metal Gear Solid 3. It's the best game I've ever played. Go play it, go play it. I'm not super into stealth. However, I have played Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, but never played Metal Gear Solid 3. I don't know why. Don't ask me, because I honestly cannot answer it. I feel ashamed that I've never played it. And this year I played it, I beat it in one weekend, and that is something that doesn't happen often to me, that I am so engaged into a, for a game, especially in storylines, characters, and what's going to happen next, that I just keep playing and playing and playing and playing and playing the whole night long, the whole weekend long. And on a Monday, I literally stopped playing on a Sunday because I didn't want the game to end. So I beat it on a Monday. And when the credits rolled, I just sat back and thought to myself, what do I have to do with my life? What can I play that topples this game? It is so freaking good. And the beginning soundtrack is so amazing. I my mind is blown why I've never played it. I honestly, this would, the impact would have been even greater if I would have played it on the PS2, where especially its graphics would be mind blowing, probably mind blowing to play. Um, and I still like the graphics. I did play the PS3 version that has a better camera uh, control though, but man, this is a fantastic game. 10 out of 10. 10 out of freaking 10. Now, the cheat game is a game that I am playing right now at this very moment. Well, not very this moment, but you know what I mean. And I am literally at the end of the game. Uh, there is like little two steps of the character, and I am at the boss battle of this game. But I am trying to do as much as I can. I'm trying to do all the hunts, and I've done it yesterday. I'm trying to do all the Factory. I'm not entirely sure if, if I want to do that because it's a little bit boring. I'm trying to make all the best weapons possible, trying to grind the levels to at least 999 HP. Of course, I'm talking about Rogue Galaxy because I'm basically at the end of the game, right? I'm basically at the end of the game. I haven't beaten it yet, but I will, um, even though I've heard that there's a shit ton of boss battles at the end of the game. I love this game. I absolutely love this game. And when I was a kid, when I was much younger, 
I liked the game, but it was brutally hard because I didn't understand how the game, how the feature worked and how, how do you upgrade your weapons? How do you do this? How do you do that? So I remember this game being pretty good, but I disliked it in somehow, but holy damn, this is a top tier RPG. One of the best I've played on the PS2. Of course, not better than Final Fantasy. Nothing is better than Final Fantasy 10, of course not. Um, I love the characters. I love the graphics. The soundtrack, the world building, it really feels that you are in a gigantic universe and you can fly around worlds and these worlds are pretty massive, they are pretty expensive. I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10 because um, I love the game and even though again I'm a little bit cheating because I haven't beaten it yet, I will beat it this week. I will beat the game this week. Um, so. This was really fun to do, to be really honest. I've basically done a couple of reviews in one video. As I mentioned, this is episode one, and once I have beaten a few more games, uh, I have so many games in my mind I want to play. I'm actually getting this sense of, oh, I have to rush the game because I really want to play this. I really want to really play this. I really want to play that, but I'm not rushing. I'm taking my slow ass time trying to to get as much as possible out of the games that I am playing. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have you played any of these games? Uh, rate them if you want. I, I'm very curious. How do you like certain games? Or the games that you have been playing lately and you have beaten, rate them in the comments below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And like always, bleh, you'll see this old boomer next time. Ooh, 20 minutes.